Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to make a pet first aid kit at home. I've been a veterinary nurse on and off for about 20 years, and I've worked at four different emergency hospitals. And during that time, I've put together just a few basic useful items that when time matters, it really helps to have readily on hand. Now, most of these items you probably have already around the house, especially if you have a human first aid kit. Everything else can be picked up at the pharmacy or on Amazon. For those of you in the medical profession or those of you that just like to go above and beyond when it comes to being readily prepared with supplies, in the description below, aside from the essentials, I'm gonna give you a glimpse into what my personal first aid kit at home actually looks like as well. But for now, we're just gonna stick to the basics. This is meant to be really inexpensive and easy to put together and just have readily on hand when you need it. All right, let's get started with some tools. If you like this kind of video, please be sure to let me know by hitting that like button. You can also hit the subscribe and the bell notification to receive other videos just like it. First up and very important in your pet first aid kit is your contact card. It's very important to have your veterinarian's contact number on hand quickly as well as the nearest emergency hospital. I put several other numbers on my own personal pet first aid kit, so I'll put a list of the numbers that I like to have handy in my kit in the description below. Now, you can easily say that you could program these numbers into your phone, but the reason I like to have a card in my kit is in the event that someone else uses the kit. For example, if you travel with your pet first aid kit in the car, or if you leave it at home with the kids or a babysitter or a pet sitter. It's just always nice to have those on hand for everyone in case they need it. Moving on from there, we've got a couple of random items here, just some tweezers. Now tweezers are really great to have on hand for pulling out ticks. Ticks carry things like Lyme disease, so we wanna remove those fairly quickly. And also things like honeybee stingers. I have a pair of bandage scissors here. And the reason I specifically want bandage scissors is because they have a dull end. You don't wanna put anything sharp towards your dog or your cat when you're trying to work with bandages, just in case they move and you accidentally nick them or cause more damage to the wound using that. Benadryl is really important to have on hand. We use this for combating allergic reactions. So in the event you have a very curious pup that sticks their nose in a fire ant hole or has an allergic reaction to a bee sting, Benadryl is very good to have readily available. Um, the actual drug in Benadryl is diphenhydramine. So you can get the generic, it's just diphenhydramine. The one thing I will tell you about any medication is it's very important that you don't give your pets any medication that hasn't been prescribed by a veterinarian. So again, with the contact numbers, before you give any dosage of anything, please call your veterinarian first. When it comes to dosing Benadryl or diphenhydramine, it's typically one milligram per pound of animal. So if you have a 25 pound dog, these come in 25 milligram tablets, you'd give one tablet to your dog. But again, call your veterinarian first. They may advise you to come in and get an injection of diphenhydramine instead, or they may tell you not to dose and to do something different altogether. Moving on to wound care, our dogs don't handle human bandages very well because they don't stick to the fur. So instead of using human band-aids, we put together doggy band-aids. And I'm gonna show you how to make a quick and easy doggy band-aid in just a few minutes with Blue Ivy. But to let you know what goes into it, we use non-stick pads, also known as Telfa pads. This goes over the wound to protect it underneath of the bandage so that it doesn't stick to the wound and cause any further damage, but also just to cover and protect it. We use a little bit of triple antibiotic ointment on our non-stick gauze Gauze pad, gauze pad to help reduce the likelihood of the bacteria growing on that wound. And then also to make the outside portion of the band-aid, we just use some of this cohesive flexible bandage. In the veterinary world, it's called vet wrap, but you can pick this up at any local drug store. Some of the pet stores have them as well, just basic bandaging equipment. And by the way, all of this stuff, you probably do already have at home again with your first aid kit, but I got everything that's on this table here at CVS with the exception of one item, which I'll show you in a minute. So again, with wound care, we wanna clean wounds, cuts, things like that first. So what do we use to do that? One of my favorite solutions, it comes in the name of HibaCleanse. It's an antiseptic cleaner, but really it's just a chlorhexidine solution. A lot of veterinary hospitals use this to clean areas, use a surgical scrub and to clean wounds. So I like to have a bottle of this on hand. If you don't have that at home already or you haven't picked it up yet, you can use hydrogen peroxide. Um, the preference is more a chlorhexidine solution or an iodine solution because it tends to be a little bit more gently than hydrogen peroxide does on wounds. This can be a really harsh chemical to use, um, which is why it's so effective as a house cleaner sometimes. There's a second reason though that we do keep hydrogen peroxide in our pet first aid kit, and that is in the event that we ever have to induce vomiting. So for example, if your dog or cat swallows something that's definitely toxic, 
very um, detrimental if it absorbs into their system and you want to get it out very quickly and right away. Something like a hardcore recreational drug or medications, prescription medications, a toxic food, an item that could potentially block their system. Sometimes your veterinarian will recommend that you induce vomiting at home. With the same line of thinking when it comes to medications, this is not something that I would ever recommend doing on your own without calling your veterinarian first. There's a few different reasons for this. One, you can cause more harm. They can aspirate some of the hydrogen peroxide and that can cause infections, pneumonia, and all sorts of other problems. But also, um, some things are more harmful coming back up than going down as well. So your veterinarian may actually want to induce vomiting at the hospital under observation, under safe circumstances with a medical team using an injectable um, uh, nausea medication as well to help get some of that stuff that they ingested uh, back up in a safe manner. So call your vet first, they'll tell you whether to induce vomiting at home or whether to come in. But it's helpful to have that hydrogen peroxide on hand just in case. Now, when we're cleaning the wound, we put our antiseptic solution on gauze. Gauze oftentimes comes in these big boxes, so in order just to keep things small and convenient and minimal, I like to take the gauze out of the box and just have five to ten squares that I'll put in a little baggie and put in my kit as well. So we just pour a little bit of the antiseptic cleaner on the gauze, rub it around to clean the area, and then put our doggy band-aid on. All right, in cleaning wounds, it's always a good idea to have a pair of gloves on hand, whether they're nitrile like these are or latex gloves, either way. But the point is, is to um, kind of protect them from transfer, transfer of bacteria and harmful things that are on your hand onto their wound or their skin and vice versa. If you have a bleeding animal or something where, you know, an injury has occurred that there could be bacteria on the surface of their skin as well, you don't want those things going back and forth. So basic hygiene, just washing your hands and cleaning your hands, but taking that extra step and putting on a pair of gloves is a really good way to reduce the likelihood of infection or transmitting any pathogens as well. For those of you out there that allow your dog to stick their head out of the car window when you're driving, number one, you really shouldn't do that, but chances are you're probably gonna continue doing it anyway. So this one's for you. This is just a simple saline solution. It's an eye wash to help wash any foreign object out of the eye. A bug could get in the eye, a small rock could get in the eye, anything that could cause potential irritation. Um, if your dog's particularly sensitive to the pollen, this is another thing that you could use the saline wash for, is just to gently rinse out their eyes. And when you pick up a bottle of saline solution, be sure you get one without the disinfectant, so not for contact solutions, just a simple saline eye wash. You never want to put your fingers in the eye of a dog either or a cat because it can further irritate them and further cause scratching and concern. So just a simple rinse with that should do the trick. Last up is a slip lead. Um, this is just a basic leash that doesn't require a collar. It has a D-ring on one side and just slides in to make a leash and collar combination. There's two reasons I really like to have this. One, because I travel with my pet first aid kit in my car. So in the event that I come across an injured animal that's not my own per se, uh, one that might be hit by a car or is out running around or is loose, this is a great way to safely kind of wrangle them and tend to them, either get them in the car or take care of the situation at hand. So it just always helps to have a leash on hand in the event that you need it. The other thing that you can use this for is actually a tourniquet. So if there's some massive bleeding, like an animal that's been hit by a car and um, they have a limb that is just very heavily bleeding and it's causing a lot of blood loss, you can actually just tie a slip lead around them really tightly until you can get them to the vet hospital. So kind of dual purpose there. I really like having one of these on hand. Last but not least is the styptic powder. And this is obviously one difference that we put in our pet first aid kit versus a human first aid kit. And the reason I like to have this on hand is because if you cut your dog's nails at home, there's sometimes a likelihood that you might cut what's called their quick. Now the quick is just the skin portion, a vascular portion that's under the nail. And when you cut it, it has a tendency to bleed like crazy as we know. A home remedy for this is you can use just a little bit of cornstarch to try to stop the bleeding, but it's not nearly as effective as styptic powder is, which we use in veterinary hospitals. So you can pick this up at a pet store or ask your veterinarian if you can have just a small amount in a pill vial kind of like this to use at home. Now that we have all of our supplies for our pet first aid kit, we need something to put it in that's convenient. You can use a basic Tupperware container at home. The only reason I tend not to use those is because things can get messed up and jumbled. And when you need something on the fly, it's a little harder to find. So I found this little gem at CVS, which I really like because it has a handle. It's just a simple little carrying case that zips up. 
But what I like even more about it is that it has zipper pouches and pockets and dividers on the inside so that you can really organize your pet first aid kit and find things that you need very quickly and with ease. Just keeps everything nice and neat and easier to access. Another container that you could use is just a lunch box. Lunch boxes also come with different dividers and sections and pouches. They're small, they're convenient, you can grab them uh, on the go, put them in the car, and they're very easy to use and also keep everything nice and neat and organized. Now that we have everything together, let's go find Blue Ivy and I'm gonna show you how to make a doggy band-aid. Blue Ivy here is gonna help me demonstrate how to make a doggy band-aid. So we're gonna make a doggy band-aid when we need to cover up a wound and we can keep that protected until we get her into the veterinary hospital. So for this, we're gonna pretend that Blue Ivy has a wound right here on her arm, just to make it easy so you have an idea of where we're gonna bandage. All we need for this is our cohesive bandage wrap, which is this right here that I took out of the package. We have one non-stick pad, which I brought out, the Telfa pad. You gonna eat that? Don't eat that. And then also just her triple antibiotic ointment to put that over the wound before we transport her to the vet to take a look at it. So we're just gonna open up our Telfa pad. Now when you open this, you can see that it opens very easy and peels apart to where you don't have to touch it. Try not to touch the area where it's going to go on the wound because you don't want things to transfer from your hand onto the wound. This is a good time to wear gloves, but even wearing gloves, try to avoid touching the area that you're going to put on the wound. You're just gonna squeeze a little bit of the triple antibiotic ointment. A little bit goes a long way, so just a tiny bit on that. And then you're gonna take your pad with the antibiotic ointment on it, and you're going to place it over the area where the wound is and hold it down. Good girl. Next up is your vet wrap bandaging or your cohesive bandage. So I'm gonna put this on the opposite side of the roll here and hold it with my finger, and I'm just going to take it and wrap it around a couple times, not super tight. We don't wanna cut off the circulation. And then we'll just cut our bandage. Now this type of bandaging sticks together on itself. So you can just give it a little bit of squeeze and the sticky part on it will stay together, but it won't stick to their skin and pull out their fur. And when you're using this kind of bandage, as you can see here, before you go to use it, you need to pull a little bit off that you're gonna use and then just gently rewrap it. That keeps it from being on way too tight. And also the direction that you wanna wrap the bandage to make it easier is you're gonna put the back end down and roll with the, the roll closest to the paw. So you don't wanna do it this way. If you can see, you wanna flip it over and have the roll closest to the paw as it goes around. And that is a really simple way to make a quick doggy bandage. So that's it. That's how you make an inexpensive, easy pet first aid kit at home. And this is something that's good to put together ahead of time because these are items that you don't really realize that you need until you really need them. So it's good to have them collectively all in one place for easy access. If you like this video, please share it with your friends, hit the like button and subscribe and bell notification to see more just like it. If you have any questions about other items that you might have or think you should put in your first aid kit or any other clarification questions about what I put in my first aid kit, feel free to put those in the comments and I'll do my best to answer your questions. Thanks so much for watching.